Hi, I'm Ruth, and I'm going to walk you through building the light sensing fan kit. When we're finished, it will look something like this. It might seem like a bit of a jumble of wires, but if I plug in the last one, you'll see the motor start to move. Before we get all the way to the end, let's skip back to the beginning and look at each of these individual components and see what we're working with. First, we have that motor, the thing that's going to move. It looks like this. It's a silver barrel, has a six millimeter white gear on one end that we don't need to worry about too much, and two wires coming out the back, a red one and a black one. This is the one place where you might wanna be a little careful with a component. Those wires can be a little bit fragile. They probably won't break, but when you're moving the, the fan around, the motor rather, you wanna move it by the barrel, not pulling on the wires. Our next component is called a photocell. It's much smaller, it looks like this. It has two legs, two wires coming out of it. If you look at the top, it has sort of a wavy line on top. That's our photo cell, which just means light sensor. So when it sees more light coming in, it will make the motor spin faster. Our next component is this. It's a transistor. That is a type of semiconductor device, but the good news is you don't have to understand what that means for this to work. I'm gonna tell you where to put it into your device, how to put it in there, and it will just work for you, whether or not you understand what it means. If you look at the end, you'll see one side is flat and one side is curved, that will matter. If it comes to you in a little piece of cardboard like this, just sort of wiggle it out and it'll come right out. We have another kind of semiconductor device called a diode. The important thing to notice on the diode is that it is a one-way switch, and so to help us know which way is one way, there is a little silver gray stripe on one side of that black barrel. So we'll pay attention to that when we put it into our project to make sure it's facing the right way. Now, if you're not sure what a diode is, you feel like maybe you've heard the word before, there's one that you likely are familiar with, and that's an LED. LED stands for light emitting diode, and this is an LED. But we don't have an LED in our project, so we're just gonna put that aside. We're gonna move our transistor and look at a part you're probably more familiar with, which is a nine volt battery. The nine volt battery will attach to this snap connector. The ends just go right on there. If your kit came with a set that has a case and AA batteries, that's okay. That works just fine. And then to connect all of this together, we're going to have six jumper wires, we call them. They look like this. Yours might have come on a strip like this. If they did, you just grab one of the wires at the end and pull it right off. That's all. You don't have to worry about breaking them. And if you somehow do, you have plenty of spares. So you will need six of those in any color plus two more. And I would like the two more to be red and black, but it actually doesn't matter at all. But traditionally in electronics building, we use red to indicate positive and black to indicate negative. And so I like to maintain that when I'm building projects. And then the last thing that you'll need is some sort of propeller. You can cut this out of the box that your parts came in. I cut mine out of a piece of craft foam. I cut mine in the shape of a circle. You can make yours a rectangle. You can make it propeller shaped. You can make it however you want it to fit on the end of that little motor. And this is what we're going to use to put it all together. This is called a breadboard. Historically, back in the, the beginning of hobbyist electronics building, people were actually putting things together literally on the board that they used to cut bread. And we still call this thing a breadboard today. There are a few things to look at. You can see we have columns as well as rows. The rows are numbered on mine, one to 30. If you have a longer one, you might have more rows. And then the columns are letters, A, B, C, D, E, and then we have a trench, and F, G, H, I, J. Those sides are not connected to one another. Inside of this, there are metal rails. And if you peeled up this backing, you could see those inside, but you don't need to. I assure you they're in there. There are also rails that go down these positive and negative pieces. And so if I tell you to put a component into D5, you'll count across to A, B, C, D, and then go to the fifth row and put it in D5. It's a little like playing the game Battleship. If I tell you to put something in the positive rail on 14, you'll find the positive rail and all of our positive and negatives are gonna go on this side. And you'll follow it down to 14 and put it in right there. And that's all, that's all you need to understand to build your project, so let's do that. Let's start with one of those colorful jumper wires. I'm going to grab a yellow one, and I'm going to put one end in E2. So remember, we just go across to E, and then down to two, 
and press it in. Sometimes those connections can be a little bit tight. Don't be afraid to press it in. If you somehow bend or break your jumper wire, you just grab another one, totally fine. And we're gonna put the other end in the power rail on 19. So go down to row 19 and stick it in right there. Next, we're gonna put in our, power our photo cell. You'll have to bend the legs a little bit. That's totally fine. You're going to have to to get them in. One is going to go in D2 and the other is going to go in D5. This can be a little more challenging to press in because they're so bendy, but that's okay because we don't mind if they bend. So I think I've got that in there. I'm going to grab another jumper wire and put one end in C5 right by that photo cell leg and the other end in C11. Another jumper wire, this one's going to go from C10, right by where you put that last piece. And then the other end in the negative rail on 14. So negative is this black line, right down to 14. Our next jumper wire is going to go from C12. And if you start losing track of the letters, you can either follow them up from the bottom or you can just count across. So I'll go A, B, C. I also know that I'm gonna end up with those three jumper wires in a row, so I know that's right. And the other end is going to go in C20. Next, we're going to use our transistor. Remember, that is the piece with the three legs and one flat side. The flat side is going to face the jumper wires that are in D10, D11, and D12. And so if you just turn this right side up with the legs pointing down, it will slide right into those three holes. You don't have to bend anything. Just make sure that the flat side is facing those jumper wires. We're gonna take another jumper wire and put this one in D20 and D21. And then we're going to get our diode. Remember that our diode has a gray stripe on one side. We want that gray stripe to go in G21 and the other side to go in E21. So we're going to have to bend it into a bit of a C shape to get it into those spots. And then G21, I better double check my diode. I had it facing the wrong way. G21 and E21, right by that jumper wire. Next, we're going to get one more jumper wire and we're going to put this one in H21. So over on this side of the trench, right by where we put that diode in, and the other side in the positive rail on 20. Finally, we're going to grab our motor, and the black wire is going to go in E20. Starts to get a little crowded up in here, but it's okay, you can get it in there. And the red wire is going to go in the positive rail on 17. Then all we have left to do is plug in our battery. So this is where I told you I like to use the red and black wires to connect. So if you have one of these snap connectors, then look at the end. It's got this little connector piece on the end and put a red wire in the hole that connects to the red wire and a black wire in the hole that connects to the black wire. And then you know exactly what goes where. I'm gonna go ahead and snap my battery into the end of this. And then I'm going to put my black one in the very first negative rail. And I'm gonna leave my motor touching the table like that so you can see when it spins when I plug this one into positive. <laughs> there it goes. If I unplug that for a moment, grab my propeller that I made, just stick it right on the end there. It doesn't have to go all the way down over the gear. If you can, it's cool. If you can't, it might actually stay on better. You can experiment and see what works better for you. But sometimes if you push it all the way down over the gear, it comes loose faster. And then when we plug it in, we'll have a cool fan. And that is all there is to this build. In the next video, we'll take a look at what we can do to use the light sensor to measure the amount of light in a room.